where the fun begins. Hey everyone, we begin tonight's meeting of the council by calling the council to order. Hello to everybody. Thank you for joining us. The council is a live Twitch talk show and podcast that discusses Star Wars The Old Republic. I am Sakari, and with me are my fellow council members, Redna. Hey, 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 hey. And Magic Ace. Yo. Um, Elisa's busy tonight, is unable to join us. So thank you to all of you guys. Uh, we appreciate having you here uh, as we get 65 started, my goodness. Um, what we'll do is we will start tonight um, discussing um, what we are thankful for. That is the uh, the ideas tonight's episode. It's a little bit belated. Um, we know that Thanksgiving has already passed for us here in the U.S., but we thought we'd take a, a nice, easygoing episode and, and discuss um, things that we're thankful for in the show. So, about SWOTOR. Magic. Yes, that would be me. I'm putting my phone on silent because I forgot I'm a good host. Um, <laughs> so, after after our live broadcast, you can find our recorded episodes everywhere podcasts are found, including our YouTube channel. You can also check us out on social media, which would be like our Twitch or our Facebook.com slash Council Sotor or Twitter, which is at the Council Sotor. Guess what? We also have a website, which is www.thecouncilsotor.com. But wait, there's more. You can also find us on Patreon.com slash Council Sotor. And pretty much any browser ever like just type us in there and we're all over the dang place it's a good time just google it yes actually i'm actually i'm discovering that i have a, a new found appreciation for the work that elise does for the show right here because i have in front of me like the window that i have the show notes on and then i have like the the obs that we stream the show through and i'm having to switch between that and chat that is like a different window sort of like three windows i'm paging between so i'm i'm sorry for my slow list tonight I'm trying to survive uh, let's get into the icebreaker the icebreaker is a quick question just to start the show something nice and easy uh and we will uh, use it to get the the discussion going tonight we're going to keep this one easy tonight. What is one of your favorite things about this time of year? How about you, Magic Ace? Um, before I became Grinchy, I would have to say it was the festivities of the season. There's so many things going on. Uh, but since I've become more Grinchy, I'm just like, meh. Grinchy. I'm happy to see my kids happy. Listen, my, my heart shrunk two sizes in this time. I'm going to keep it off. Yes, I quoted that. <laughs> Anyways. That's just great. Anyways. Yeah. Uh no, that's actually uh that's actually I don't I don't know. Like I guess right around the time I turned twenty one, I kinda just stopped caring about a lot of this stuff. Like it's all about what makes my kids happy. So mm. like my son was a newborn when I was twenty one and I just my whole world changed. Everything one hundred percent changed. And now I'm just like I'm thankful that my kids are so stoked and excited about everything. I'm happy that it's like, tis the season to be jolly and all that jazz and everybody's supposed to be happy, go lucky and all that. I'm happy that everyone's happy. That makes me happy. So that's what I'm most excited for at this time of year. Um, Redna, what about you, sir? What are you thankful for most this time of year? Or what, what do you enjoy, I guess, most about this time of year? I mean, what am I most thankful for? Uh, Thanksgiving, because Thanksgiving is the most thankful time of year. <laughs> also, it's like the least pressure of all holidays because you don't have to get gifts for anybody. You just get together and hang out, and those that want to drink can drink, and those that don't want to drink don't have to drink. And you get to have kids and grandparents and loved ones together, and it's like freaking fantastic. I've got zero grumps about Thanksgiving. So that, and then, of course, with the advent of uh, uh, now starting a family, a.k.a. getting married, and then, you know, having kids. Um, yeah, like, all meaning for all of life in all ways has increased. Right. <laughs> that sounds good. But, so, uh, but you, you uh, are I like speaking... into Christmas, too. So You are speaking as one who does not have to prepare the food. <laughs> you have not been in my household. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my wife did not cook before she met me. She is now an excellent cook, but I helped to impart the joy of cooking to her. Um, yeah, it's, it is true, actually. Though 
with a family as large as mine, with as many people as are nearby, and many of them do enjoy cooking, it does mean that none of us really feels the pressure. Like, literally, it's just like you get into a group chat with each other and just say, well, who's bringing what? Oh, I wanted to bring this this year. Oh, I wanted to bring that this year. So, like, nobody actually has the full weight on their shoulders to, you know, and then it was like this year, it was my father-in-law was like, well, I guess I'm bringing the turkey since nobody signed up for that. And he does yeah. meat really well. So <laughs> there you go. Well, I was going to say, that's why the force invented honey baked ham, you know, like you can order your whole entire <sighs> Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner from yeah. a store, you know, and get it, go get it retail. That's all. Okay. So for take two for this question, what am I most thankful about for this time of the year? The food. Oh yeah. The food. It's been that good already. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, Thanksgiving food's better than Christmas food, but Christmas food is really good too. I, I would agree. So, so my family traditionally around Thanksgiving and are awesome too. So yeah, like Thanksgiving, it's like yeah, dude, let's bust out the turkey. But everybody's so sick of it by the time it's Christmas rolls around that everybody does ham instead for Christmas. And I think between those two, where it gets us there. This year, my family decided to forego the turkey and went with lamb. So we eaten lamb for Thanksgiving. Just didn't sit right. Thanksgiving. Yeah. I, I mean, like, lamb sounds like a totally acceptable option for Christmas, particularly since it was, like, the shepherds, you know, being <laughs> sure. called for the birth of Christ. It's, so it's a theme. Maybe they brought a lamb to eat with them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah If I don't they know. didn't, they really should have, because lamb is superior to ham, I'm just saying. Dude, especially when it's, like, roasted on a spit and you can just shave it right <laughs> off. All right. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's uh, very I'm good. Hungry. Yeah, no, it's very good. But um, there's always inevitably somebody who's, like, bothered by the fact that it's a lamb <laughs> so it comes with its decent you know a decent serving of guilt on the side but it just well, it's so and, tasty and you know if we're gonna get into the food then we got to get deep because for me we actually started experimenting i even went to a local you know like local foods and like like if if i were a hunter which i'm not yet outside of fishing fishing is sort of hunting right but if i were a hunter it was like this class where it was taking things that were in the area and then how to cook them. Right. And one of the things that I learned was how to cook duck and duck is actually a great Christmas meal as well. Duck. Yeah. Uh, I can. Uh, yeah. Uh, orange. Uh, what is it? A orange. Um, I love that duck, duck dish. There. Four and then actually, <laughs> my favorite is the, uh, le lupin, which is, you know, the bunny rabbit. Come on. Best meat on the planet. Love that. So, you know, there's, always, there's always lots of options. I've tried ostrich before, but I've never tried rabbit so i guess oh my gosh that was another thing we went to so uh the family went to, out to california uh the coast and uh yeah totally went by some massive ostrich farms it was like whoa really cool yeah really cool stuff this time of year the thing i guess i am i enjoy the most is it's the little things for me i, I like being outside when the air is really crisp and cold and smelling smelling smoke in just like a hint of of somebody having a fire somewhere. That's one of my favorite things. I don't know, like this this whole time of year, I just enjoy like just one, you know one after the other as far as the uh, holidays go. Pretty cool, a lot of fun. So, um, all right, so we have um, our thing to talk about tonight, namely what we are thankful for most in uh, in Swotor. Elise did leave us some notes, even though she wasn't able to join us tonight. So we do have uh, some things that she would like to bring up, some things about Swotor that she'd like to throw out there. Um, so we will discuss hers. I guess we'll uh, – does it work for you guys to just kind of bring them up one at a time here and there while we're talking about what works for us? Sounds good. So, um, Redna, can I pick on you to start us off? Is there something about Swotor specifically that you are thankful for most – right now i can play it on my busted computer <laughs> i'm thankful for that no actually recently it's been a lot of fun getting back into playing solo i've been playing a lot solo recently which quite frankly since the game came out i've done very little work legit solo really? even all my leveling various characters and everything has been done with others like we we paired up and went through and worked on things together um or even like uh, dark versus light it was always like you know just trying to crush it with people in order to group up and gain as much experience as possible in the group environment as quickly as possible right uh but recently as a part of the swotor unite you know i was playing solo on the um 
the warrior and really enjoying that uh which i did listen to that episode since That's it came out this the week empire is the bomb <laughs> it yeah. had nothing to do with the story elements actually because he's a closet never imperial. mind he just doesn't uh, know it yet magic <laughs> although i was really fine. glad i know it, it for him it was fun doing the dark side tatooine story bit that was pretty cool uh i i i had forgotten honestly i probably had had a few too many drinks when i had uh when i went through it the uh, first time so uh Picking up on some of the nuances, especially knowing what's coming in the future and everything, it was fun getting that prophetic moment of, you know, if I continue down the path that I'm headed, uh, which I I did really enjoy that. But uh, no, it, it's actually more that I've just kind of gotten into some of the Zen uh, grindy, like basically just wandering the world and picking up every single uh, mission I possibly can wow, and just okay. heading, you know, because outside of the class and, and planet... And even most of the planet, I'm space barring most of that stuff. The class, I'm trying to take my time just to keep mm -hmm. as fully into it as possible. But otherwise, I'm space barring most of it. And it's just the whole exploration and wandering. And, you know, because of the computer problems, even, like, it's kind of been humorous because it's like I go out and I do a bunch of stuff and fight and stuff. And then I get back into my computer and I work on that. And then I get back into the game. And I, I don't know. It's just been fun. And it's this is maybe the most fun I've been having playing a non-tank um melee class ever honestly a non-tank kind of... melee so what right. you're saying is if you've ever done like melee type stuff it's been primarily tanking yes i guess it well, makes sense i've done all of the classes of course but yeah like to actually play like in group combat and or even just like to pay attention to what i'm doing or whatever yeah i like i have found zero joy in the assassin shadow uh dps gameplay it's like mind-numbing because it's just so simple um yeah i mean yeah yeah as far as i can think but at the same time like my commando dps i never really enjoyed it much for the, pretty much the same reason even though that's ranged uh but no i, I yeah for when it comes to melee, you know the other thing is too because body positioning is so important mm -hmm. and that's part of the reason i think i've been enjoying it is this time i'm kind of just in it like just enjoying really getting myself into the thick of the fight and, and paying attention to the body positioning and everything a lot more other than just standing stupid, but it's actually necessary for me to be able to use my abilities, you know? Yeah. I've, I'm really enjoying that. Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, I'll throw one out there. One of the things that I'm thankful for, um, especially about SWOTOR right now is the, the recent community involvement. It's one of the things I had on my list. Um, I, I was able, you know, we did a whole episode on it last week, you know, just kind of talking about extra life, um, SWOTOR Unite and all of those different things. And it was a blast. I know Magic, uh, you and I got to do SWOTOR Unite together. We were both there. We lasted as long as we could into that thing until we just couldn't keep our eyes open anymore. Everyone was falling out of their chairs. But it was a blast. I mean, it was a lot of fun getting together with with voices that I've heard so much listening to every which podcast there is possible. Um, and just having everybody in Discord at once was just a blast. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I would definitely say the community. It's actually one of the things that uh, Elise threw out there as well. She said friends as well. So I imagine, you know, Elise was very heavily involved, those of you who know, who were part of our Extra Life activities this year. Uh, she was in, in the thick of it. Um, as she always is. And uh, so, yeah, I'm sure that, that Friends is uh, probably number one on her list as well. Magic, do you have one for us? What are you thankful for about SWOTOR right now? I've got a couple things. Sorry, my son should be in bed. He's with my parents and my phone keeps going off, which is why I'm being rude and looking at my phone because it's my six-year-old <laughs> texting from my mother's phone. So anyways, <laughs> um, uh, in SOTOR, I'm thankful that at least there's new content, like, okay, NIM con more NIM content coming out, with the caveat of it's not TOS or Ravagers. Right. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> I mean, it is new yeah. NIM content, and it is giving people things to work on. I mean, like, Nahut, whoo, oh my, <laughs> good luck, <laughs> good luck. Um, You're talking about the veteran I'm mode version right now. So with a NIM version on top of that, or are you on the test server? No, I'm talking uh, test server. I well, I mean, technically, uh, I'm not going to get into all that stuff, but just watching what I've seen has oh. been nightmarish. <laughs> all right, okay, fair enough. Them, but nightmarish. Um, it's 
I'm thankful that they are doing that. But again, with the caveat of it's not TOS or Ravagers, which they actually could do and implement, but they haven't. I don't know why. And because I haven't signed a DA, Matt won't tell me. So anyways, <laughs> uh, I, am, I am thankful that there's new content. I'm also thankful that we still actually have a thriving community, which is funny because literally since I started playing, they've been singing about the death of the game, which in reality... The moment something is created and or born, it begins to die because that's what carbon-based things and their creations do. But uh, I'm thankful that this game is actually still pretty thriving for the most part. There's still a lot of people there. There's still a lot of stuff going on. I don't know about you guys, but I do stuff literally every single night multiple times. Like, I'm constantly doing stuff in this game. So for me, I am thankful that there's new content coming out and that I still always have stuff to do. And I'm really bored. And if I am, I just go play Overwatch. So yeah, no that's currently what I'm thinking about. And I did, I did enjoy Switch Reunite. I thought it was great that there was an idea that we wanted to bring the community together, and we had a pretty big turnout, in my opinion. Um, I am also thankful for uh, the fact that they upped how many um, characters you could have on one server because I had to buy another slot. I now have 45 characters on one server. Really? And I want, I want to make another one. I need Sorks really bad. I've been component farming because of the massive amount of components I'm going to need in the new update. So how are you doing that across that many characters? Are you just PvPing like crazy? No. So I have Legacy Gear. And so what okay. I do is I craft 246 left side for alt characters, so I'm not wasting components upgrading. Okay. Um, and then I am going, <laughs> literally pugging every... Flipping Nimrun, I can pug so that I can get components oh, because I, it's, I won't go into it now because I we were talking about other things this later. Whole strategy, but yeah. I need a lot of components, and I spent ugh, I spent eight thousand components gearing up a PT because I'm so sick of healing. I wanted to DPS something, and now I'm actually regretting it just for the fact that I end up not being ever ever able to PT because everyone always needs a healer, and that's my lot in life. So I basically wasted those components, and it's actually killing me now. Like, the cheapskate in me is dying that I wasted those credits. Yeah, some, are not some buyer's um, remorse. Oh, boy. Like, I actually really love playing my PT. It's AP. I really love it. It's a fun time. And, like, when I broke uh, 8.5K on a boss, I was like, yeah, I'm not even fully augmented. Yeah! Like, it was really exciting for me because I don't DPS. But um, now I'm really, like, really actually ticked because I'm probably never going to get that take that character into anything. I'm still always stuck healing. Um, yeah, so I, I have to get more components, which is why I have multiple alts, and I run them continually. Farming galore sounds like a blast. <laughs> or not a blast, as it may be. Well, I mean, running with the people I run with most of the time is a blast, but uh, not for the reason that I'm running, to be honest. Right. Reyna, do you have another one? What are you thankful for about Swotor right now? Okay, I didn't realize I had to have more than one. Oh, that's fine. Ah. I have a whole list. <laughs> and so, so I have a whole list okay, of so a bunch, but that just means it means I'm going to be dictating the conversation here. <laughs> I am thankful that we have gotten uh, an easier, more streamlined GSF gearing or, or leveling or you know uh, ship improvement process. Commendation earning, that's what I'm thinking of. Yes, they did streamline that, didn't they? I, it, that's one of those things yes, that I haven't and they touched made it much. way easier. Like, the, the wait time from having a, you know, piece of crap Millennium Falcon that doesn't fly fast to having a piece of crap Millennium Falcon that's actually effective is much <laughs> faster now. <laughs> right. I need to get in back into GSF sometime just for the fun of it. I don't think I've done it in maybe four years. Like it came out, I did a lot on a character, and then I stopped. And I know there were some changes since. And then there was like, hey, you get one shot now. So I just didn't do it. And then they made it so it was more entry-level friendly, and I still haven't gotten into it. So I kind of owe that to myself. Do some GSF. Dude, it's great. It's a really good game mode. I mean, I think it's something that I is, mean, it's easier if you've if got you a few friends. If you owe it friends. to yourself to torture yourself, then yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It's like being magic. an imperial. If you're into the sadism, then go for it. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, I mean, do you know me at all? <laughs> Just, anyways, that's a different topic. So, right that way. Back... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't talking about that either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have a lot to talk about. About I know next week about five point ten and some of the stuff coming out on that. So the, we're going to get into a, a lot on that. 
Um, just to mention, one of the things that is coming out with 5.10 guild changes, and I am happy that there are some very much needed improvements coming to to gilding um, that I think have been necessary for a long time. Like um, just the ability to email your whole entire guild, for instance, that is fantastic. Or um, And I, one of the suggestions I made to Eric Musco behind the scenes was, hey, can we get some longer rank names? That would be nice because there's some character limits that have been bothering me. Um, but just I, I hope they they were able to slip that in there. But banned by legacy, there's some needed guild improvements. I, I, there's a couple three that I know we're not going to get that were necessary, but I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to be thankful for what we're getting. So guild improvements by far for me. You guys have anything else to throw out, or should I throw one of Elise's out? All right. So Elise is thankful for decos. <laughs> Are, are we even surprised? I think that's appropriate. It's absolutely, it's totally her. But I, I kind of wish that she'd have been here to be able to unpack some of that. What what decos mean? Because I know there's been a lot more decos with the more recent packs. Um, with the um, recent flashpoints, there were a lot of like boss bound decos uh, or boss dropped decos that were coming out of that. So there's some really good things I think in the deco department. Wait, but, so. All right, so here's a question I have for you in regards to the demo stuff, right? Have they fixed the, the crap involved around the operations? Like, it used to be that you would get decos from the operations from the operations. And now it's like random decos drop all over across the operations. You know, it's like, and, and, and then it was like, you know, uh, even like speeders that were only off of certain bosses now come from other operations and not from the original operation. Right. Like, have they fixed their loot tables, or are they still scattered to the to the wind? It may be that that's it's quote unquote broken by design. Maybe they did that on I don't know why they drop like they do from everywhere now. What's I, I take it you don't like it the way it is right now? Um, I mean honestly, I kind of like being able to go. It feel I, I mean I I'm sure there are plenty of people that disagree with me, but personally, I like being able to go into the operation and then get something from it that kind of commemorates or symbolizes that I did and achieved this from said operation or location or whatever. Like I like the world drops, you know, that the world drops had correspondence with the environs in which they were being dropped as well. I've, I, it seems uh, relevant to me. And then this is why I've always thought thematically it's a great idea. Uh, and, and I was really glad to see that they did this with Nathma, that mm -hmm. when they came out with that new Flashpoint, they came out also with a bunch of decorations that dropped from that Flashpoint. You know, like any of their content, when it comes to decorations or, or these cosmetic things, I just feel like thematically it's fully appropriate that they tie it to the content as it releases. Yeah. So and if, if you they... want that style, go there and kill stuff that has that style and you'll get that style of deco, which I think is really right. You, you know where to go, generally speaking, to, to get the kind of stuff that you want. Because uh, also because it just kind of makes a lot of sense. Right. I mean, you're not going to be gain gaining art assets these new art assets come with this new content. And concurrently, if you want to tie it into your world, then you should also be saying, hey, listen, if you want a chair from this area, you should go to that area to get that chair. You know? <laughs> Granted, right. that's also maybe tying into a theme of thievery, but um, I'm okay with that. You know, Star Wars works <laughs> fine, right? <laughs> I definitely think they've been going uh, like the right direction with decos. I mean, wasn't how, how many episodes ago where we were like ch chanting more decos, more decos? I feel like they've been introducing more decos, but I still think there's not enough of them. Like the deco prices are still over the over the moon, but hey, you know. It, I, so I would still say more decos, but I am definitely thankful that we have start at least get the variety that we that we have been getting lately. I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah, me too. I'm also really thankful that they've started returning to doing some class balance changes. You know, I like when they mix it up. Uh, variety is the spice of life and and quite frankly in my opinion in an in a dynamic mmo particularly with any kind of player versus player environments or combat i like that they change it and realistically actually even from an operation standpoint i like them changing class balance on a regular basis so that you know the 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 one DPS that blows all the others away isn't the one that you want to have four of in your group. I actually like that right. since it's constantly changing, you know, that it's it's not forcing you to have to play this one for this role. Yeah. Um, 
What yeah, I like about that, and I'm looking forward to, actually, and I guess another thing I'm thankful for is the fact that we know there's an expansion coming. <laughs> right. No kidding. Yeah, I think this. I I kind of agree with you on that. Like, I, I like playing my character, knowing my character isn't the hottest DPS out there right now, knowing that her turn is coming again at some point. <laughs> you know, actually, that, that's just a like perfect way to say it. Yeah. Right. Because that way, whatever character you love, right? Like, I love my gunslinger. Now, granted, it's been you know six years since they were any good in PvP, but still, I can hold in my heart some hope that maybe they will be. And they have definitely been at the bottom of the barrel for hey, uh, DPS as well as the top really of the barrel good. for DPS. So they're actually really good in Excuse PvP. You know, you just sit there and guard, and then when the stealth people come in, you're like, I see you. <laughs> and then so you run you're away. Doing it wrong. Yes, I know. No, That's no, about all I've been it. doing for six years. <laughs> You see, and you stay in your hunker down cover, like you pop that hunker down. You're basically a stealth detector. (laughs) Right, that's exactly what you are, because you get those extra thirty levels of stealth detection by staying in cover, and then yeah, you just start screaming into voice, guys, 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 they're coming. coming. There's one of them. There's two. There's four of them. There's five. There's five swarming me. You know, (laughs) knock back every defensive, reset my defenses, pop all my defenses. Okay, guys, I'm dead. You've got ten seconds before you finish channeling. Yes, basically, (laughs) it's it's. It's sniper tanking, right? Or, or gunslinger tanking. It's like you keep your, you, you know that your shield is going to absorb a little bit. That's a little bit of survivability there. You're popping all your cooldowns because there's some survivability, but you're not really trying to put out any kind of DPS. You're in the chat box. <laughs> Especially since they freaking took away. I, one thing I'm not thankful for, okay? No, no, no. They I keep try to kill my with flash the grenade. My flash grenade, by all rights, should be an AoE eight <laughs> scant mesmerize, okay? For Pete's sake. Give me back my flash grenade. They that can give you that back when I get back rocket punch and flame thrower <sighs> on my Merc and or orbital strike. I know some operative. of those changes. Yeah, or, 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 operatives uh, not having or, uh, 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 orbital strike uh, still or, bothers me. Or, shadow walk on shadows and all that crap. Yeah, phase walk. I agree. No, no. Or the fact that marauders and operatives lost their droid CCs. I mean, that was extremely helpful. Mm, it was. Yeah, the droid CC, I still miss that. I still want to do that. I'm like, I'm, something's too. missing here. And it takes me a second to figure out what it is. I'm like, oh, I don't have the CC anymore. That's what I've been wanting to do. And so. people who have joined the game since then, they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, boy. You don't, <laughs> know. You don't know the pain. I'll tell you what. One of the things I am most thankful for is that we have, that we have a Star Wars MMO at all. Oh. I thought you were going to say the sell trash button, I was going to say, because that's always been my favorite thing added to the game, I have to say. So, oh, like the, the you make your companion do it? Yeah, because – no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. When you went to the vendor to sell all the crap that oh, you, you just pushed the button and off all the goes. ground, you had to individually – just like in freaking while, you had to individually sell each piece of trash. And since I was broken, it was my first level 50, I had to do that because I didn't know how to make money and I couldn't get to Illum yet. Right. So – when they implemented the sell trash button, I was like, oh, I was like, thank you, guys, yes. because it saved so much time. All you people who joined later, you don't know the struggle <laughs> is real. Well, now you can just click a button and it's all like, bye. Yeah. Well, I, Kid Lee, at least in chat, understands where I was going with that. Like, it's a rest in peace, Star Wars Galaxies. The Star Wars Galaxies, it was just, I'm not going to go back into it because it'll make my heart hurt. I don't want to do that around this time of year. It's about thanks, giving thanks and not crying. But, uh, <laughs> hey, at least we have a Star Wars MMO. I can run around with I a lightsaber. My tissues. goodness. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm... Uh, I, 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 and I, you kind of... I have to... From ahead. Starhawk Ranger, I just wanted to interject as well. I also am very thankful that they are having the collection sale again. This time of year, that is a thing. And it is freaking really? fantastic. Black oh, sale it's, Friday. It's Black Friday. Black gotcha. Friday sales and yeah, all that stuff. All of the like because they give you like specific items too, like all the time. And you can get the black black dye and the white white dye and the you know, all this stuff that like you you long for throughout the year and hope that maybe it'll randomly show up somewhere. It's like at least this time of year, you know, as long as you're paying attention, you'll right. probably see it. So yeah, it's freaking fantastic, elastic. <laughs> Good word, actually. All right, let's let's look and see. An, is another... it though? Because I feel like <laughs> word is kind of strong there. <laughs> it's fantabulous, it, it... elastic. It's a great word. Yeah, that's what it is. Anyways, okay, she's got a long one here. So she says an honorable mention. Thank goodness. New content coming in December. 
<laughs> I think she's been holding out for a while. New story content is in the game. Is getting long on the tooth. Conquest grinding is not a substitute. Agreed. Yes, some new story content I am all for. I think it's going to be great. I suppose I could put that on my list as well. Stuff I'm thankful for. Oh, goodness. Um, so, along those lines, I would say... Wait, what was that one that you just mentioned for her? Oh, uh, The Honorable uh, Mention? The Honorable Mentions, thank goodness for new story content. That's she, yeah. <laughs> what she's looking forward to, probably. I don't know why she called that Honorable Mention. That would be the top of my list if I were her. But I think probably Decos and, you know, Decos and Friends. Pro- probably it. because she has no faith that it will be any better than what we've gotten in the last two quote-unquote expansions. Yeah. Which was the worst story the game has had to date. But realistically, this incoming, at least we know we're returning to some faction combat, um, maybe. Right. As long as there's a difference between the two factions, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to nuance that a bit. And it's one of the things I was thankful for because I was sitting there today thinking, you know, what am I thankful about? in the... And just kind of exploring broadly, what about this? What about that? What about this? Am I really thankful for that? And I think one of the, and this is a subtle thing about this new content. It was something I realized when, and it's in one of the Kotet chapters, when you go to the Empire to talk with, what's her name? Who's the Empress right now? Suddenly I'm forgetting her name. Darth uh, Asina. You go to meet with Asina, you go hang out with her, but like the way the Empire looks right now, there's been a a steady, I think, development going on at Bioware for, for ambient and background design where their world design is steadily improving. And I think you see that showing back up there and then walking the hole to where you actually get on that uh, um, that shuttle with her. But you're walking down through those holes and the way that they have them looking is kind of like a new... I, I feel like the old empire was kind of carbon copy. Hey, we created this room. Now we use this room here. We use a room here. And we put some walls in it to make it a little bit different. But you can kind of feel a little bit of cookie cutter to it. Whereas now things just feel very u- new and unique, you know? So I, I I know it's very subtle, but I'm I guess what I'm trying to say is like there's been a change, there's been a a an improvement in the way that BioWare is designing backgrounds for this game, or or the, like the world around oh, us. Oh yes, oh absolutely. I think is really and cool. and actually I think even to that extent because we've we've mentioned it in previous shows, but the fact that one of the things that they've actually been most consistently responsible about in improving within the game has been actually graphics quality, rendering right. capabilities, shadows, lighting effects. Like all of these things, which I actually, even weather effects, all these things actually do tie together very nicely, particularly in what is traditionally, you know, the Imperial Empire look is more austere just by nature. But by enhancing all of those techniques, they actually uh, free themselves to create a much more diverse um, set of, you know, graphic renders that are that, that i think are really really awesome i mean heck i'm even looking at your background right now because i know you're not sitting in a tie fighter and just you know something <laughs> right. as simple as that is actually kind of exciting because you know uh that that kind of depth and detail can can be brought in sure. right. so. yeah we do it because we can <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so, so another thing i'm thankful for is that i actually got to show up on the show this week because <laughs> it's it's a very complicated thing. Like like you'll see, my complexion is a little bit yellowy, and I, that's after desaturating it because because to these guys I look like an oompa loompa on uh, um, Skype. But I have to really boost my color to be able to get like a really you know the green screen is proper into OBS, and in OBS I was, I'm able to crop out the green to make it actually look decent, and then I have to desaturate myself. So I go through so many. It's I'm just glad I'm here that. tonight. <laughs> is what I'm saying. My goodness. Look at it. Um, let's see. Um, what else do we have here? One of Elise's. Um, she is thankful for the council. Oh, OMG. I dubs- feel like that's <laughs> obligatory though, because right. like, if you don't say that, then you're like, well, you're heartless. Yeah. And then everyone else was like, why didn't you say that? And then the rest was like, well, we didn't say it because we thought you would say it. And so it's like, somebody's got to say it. This time was Elise. Yes. Usually it's Redna. Yes. Redna's usually. <laughs> She's actually right. <laughs> I, oh, I'm thankful for Magic Ace because that was really nice. Ugh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> This is getting sappy. Anyways, next. Sappy is good for us. So I'm actually out of the list of stuff I had to to bring up. I don't know if you guys have, if there's anything else that occurs to you 
Or if there's anything that the, um, that our uh, listeners or slash watchers have to bring up, um, definitely put it in chat. Let us talk about. I'm it. also thankful that in this, if you haven't done this yet, and this is a spoiler for you. I'm sorry, but by this time, I don't feel obligated to keep this a secret anymore. I'm thankful that when I got Theron back, I didn't have to have that awful haircut. They let me have his original haircut back. Because I, I was I was milking wait, this wait, for wait, all wait, it was wait. worth. Is there choice in that? Can you yeah. actually have the so new like, one? Yes, so you they can. give him back to you how he came originally, but then they give you a little customization thing to put in the slot that puts the nasty haircut back. So like yeah. your first companions that you get when you get to choose between uh, uh, outfits. Yes. Which is, if you remember, when we... Um, when we had questions for Musco, one of the questions was, theoretically, if we could get Theron back, would we get that haircut? Oh, wait, wait, it wasn't ours. Hold on, no. Volk did it. Volk had a um, a live stream interview with him, and I just kept spamming Volk. I'm like, ask him, ask him the question. Please ask him the question. And he was like, okay, okay, I've got to ask this because Magic won't leave me alone. He's like, do you get Theron's hair back? And they're like, uh, <laughs> we, we can't tell you anything like that. But theoretically, if we would let you have Theron back, yes, that would be an option. I'm like, boom, that's all I needed. What he, what he wasn't able to tell you <laughs> legally was that there were women surrounding the Bioware building with t- torches and pitchforks <laughs> insisting this. Or no, I see plenty of men on Twitter look. freaking out about it. I called it his mama, uh, I hate my mama 80s rebellion haircut. And yes. I'm sorry, but that's just. That doesn't jive with my love of Theron. I'm like, nah, man. I think Shoot. it's funny. You get to the end of that story, and he's like, "Hey, I've decided I'm a good guy again. You know, it was it, I was undercover the whole time. So, um, here's my my better hair. <laughs> it's, poof, that's it's all it's different. <laughs> it's like well, that was Drew. part of his undercover look. Hello. <laughs> uh, so here's the real question. Since we're doing spoilers on this point, can I kill him? You, oh, so you, you can leave him to die, but you're not physically killing him. It's not like Quinn where you can, like, stab him with a lightsaber. You just literally walk away and leave him and then... I mean, the hound in Game of Thrones life. was left to die, and that didn't work out so well. So I'm just curious. Well, so, so, his own mother so sent you an there? email telling you, like, she knows why you did it, blah, blah, blah. And so, like, she's confirming he's dead. So unless she's covering well, up for a- him, you know, just saying. <laughs> Oh, you just, know that he'll show up. That doesn't make you a mother. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I said mother as in, like, biologically. Like, in the force, yes. you would feel his know, death. Not as in, like, mommy of the year. So, so while we're on the subject of, of stabbing people, I've had a question. I've never been able. To, there's, at the yes. end of the chapter where you go wilderness exploring on your own, you know which one I'm talking about? Where you're like it's a really drawn out chapter, and you jump in across the. Go get the magic gun. The magic gun. Yes, that one. In order to help fight the emperor. You, because, you have you know, to fight. My like trooper like really a... needs a magic gun. That's <laughs> <laughs> force I'm imbued sorry. gun. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> it's like uh, at the end of that, I've I've never been able to kill Satil Shana. At least dark side choice my way into. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to knock her off here. So that you can't actually kill her, but she's oh. like. She, I imagine she escapes, her. right? Fraternizing with the light side Darth Mar. Why the hell would you want to kill her? Come on, this is good Star Wars storytelling. <laughs> yeah, but I'll just say this. I On multiple characters that I romance there and on, not that I do that on all my characters, but I mostly do. Mm-hmm. Um, on one of them, she was like, poor Theron, and she shook her head, and then she like makes you black out, and you wake up, and she's gone. You're like... Hello? Okay. <laughs> like, she's so, gone, she, you're like, well, dang it. So, another one of those choices that really doesn't make a difference. Yeah, and, and I knew you, that you wouldn't, wouldn't. You're going to attack her, and she's like, nah, man, sit down. <laughs> you're like, dang. Get some old habits. You know, the, the irony is, is that I actually really do like Satil Shan. Like, as a character, like, all of it. I actually dig it. She fits very well in the Star Wars universe. And I know her backstory and everything, right? Like, because was that included in the Revan novel, or... Which book did I read that I? Was no, there was the novels that. Uh, yeah, but anyway, because you get you get Theron and and, and Satil Shan's backstory in some of the novels, and I actually really dig like you know as much shade as I'm as I'm throwing at her for abandoning her child. Like 
realistically, that is the Jedi way. Like, they're not particularly supposed to be making families, you know? I actually so- think the Jedi way is more likely, like, you know, don't do that to make the family in the first place. That way you, you will abandon. But, you know, semantics. But I think maybe you're misconstruing a ton of information because, no, the Jedi way is to kidnap children and raise them and brainwash them in a, in a certain... Right, uh, but you don't. they don't pop out their own. They're still fashion. your kids. You made a force since right. a child. We'll take that. We're not allowed to have them, but we'll she take yours. A, she should not be held accountable for her physical activities as a Jedi. She has higher responsibilities, so it fits very right. well. <laughs> Kid, Kid Lee mentions the book is Annihilation. Thank you, Kid Lee. I did say here we go, and I think I think, but I'm not seeing it on the screen yet because there is like what is it, a 15 second delay or some such. But we are back. And okay. we have an ad to wait through. Hey, hey, even though, it was, uh, even I though I pay for Twitch Prime, I still have to watch an ad to find out if we're actually live. Or not. <laughs> right. So yeah. so this so I'm going to say I don't think I remember a Bioware live stream. Where there has not been a crash at some point during the the stream, right? It happens to him every single time. There's a crash. I've seen them. They're, recently, they've done far better. I've oh, actually, I've seen. Uh, you're right. You're right. They do tend to, but it hasn't been a full on crash. It's been more of a. Um, I have seen one where they got start to finish. A lot of people in the chat room flipped out, but if you hit the refresh button, they were fine, oh. and they didn't actually reboot the stream but yeah there's always complications with the switcher ones you're right now that you mention it yeah so that's this is our first i think our first show crash i mean i know we've had technical difficulties i I know we've had bad slides (laughs) but i don't think we've had a crash in the middle of a show before so that's kind of fun 65 episodes which is like almost let's pretend the reason we're cursed is because this was the 69th week right we missed a few random weeks sure well, I'm thankful that we have been able to as long as we have. So, yeah, so there was a recent change. To... I am thankful Go ahead. for what Skype used to be. Or for what it used to and be. <laughs> for the memories. <laughs> right? Exactly. I'm oh, my goodness. for the video archive of what we used to be able to do. <laughs> they forced us all to upgrade to this new Skype A point, whatever it is, and it is awful compared to Skype class. For this kind of a thing. So if anybody, hey, let's tell you what, let's open it up to the community. If anybody knows a video conferencing um, service that would actually work for us, um, be by all means, text it to the council, which account will. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, honestly, what we what we need is to get something like 720p for each camera in a standard frame size. So the right. same width, same height for each camera. <laughs> right exactly like right now just to peek behind the curtain we have a fourth caller in this call it's just we don't have that camera showing because we had to do it in order to be able to get skype to give us a consistent frame. <laughs> right. it's so pathetic it is so pathetic <laughs> or else magic would span two frames be like me and her frame and then i'd have to like bump myself over to fine if you could take the bar out because she at least looks better than you and i but no offense, man. I love you. <laughs> no, if, no, none I take it. Ever, I've done <laughs> so, it is, is. Is there anything that occurs to anybody in the chat room or to any one of us? Any other thankfuls? Things that we're thankful for? Or do we get to have an early, uh, early episode for a change? Well, that's kind of rare for us. I can't say that I'm thankful for anything else at the moment, just because I think we've talked about everything else on other episodes, right. and I'm still salty about the new Gary and stuff. So I'm just like trying to pretend like I'm happy. <laughs> right? Yeah. There's a lot of people. So your entire world view is entirely determined based off of something that hasn't even come to us, and that they're actually testing and considering changing. Just to be sure. I'm sorry, but math kind of gets to me. And when I was figuring things out and people who are actually doing all that math and are really good at it told me I need like 60,000 some components to gear one character. I'm sorry. I'm a little salty. Whether or not they change it, the fact that they would do that at all makes me a little salty. That they would put that out there and want normal people to grind that. How are normal <laughs> people going to get that? 
I'm grinding NIM content on for your repeat. Own, for your own sanity, oh, my, my suggestion God. would be to not play the beta and not listen to Too other late. people's information <laughs> until such time as yeah. live is actually. Well, if it's, I understand it's too late now. I'm just saying going forward for the future. Okay, right? but yeah, but if I don't listen to those people and enough of us don't complain and they don't change it, then that crap really gets put into the live stuff. And then people like you guys who are like, oh, well, I wonder what the new gear is. And you're like, well, I'm never going to get that. And so you don't even try. Or the people who can get it and then they craft the stuff. Then they sell it for an exorbitant amount. And the rest of us are like, well, I guess we're never doing that NIM content. Because guess what? The pieces you need that you're not getting from components drops off of the new content. Yeah. So, Anyways. by the way, um, what is Baby Magic playing with in the background? I've oh, just got she's playing with Woody. Woody, like, from Toy Story, the boots. Okay, like, when I she drops it in the Story face in the, the, in the boots. Wow, she's, th you know, she's three. <laughs> but no, like, the boots Again, where it says Andy on the bottom, when she drops it, it, like, slams onto the floor, and she thinks it's really great. See, there you go. <laughs> No, that's cool, and I totally understand. The thing is, I don't believe that you personally, as a single individual, as a part of the testing process, are going to change the dynamic of everything. But if it actually legitimately destroys your ability to enjoy and be thankful for things, like, universally, then I think that you should personally... Whoa, 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 whoa. So I said that you can enjoy game. yourself. And I the said in game. Until Thank such you. Right, exactly. But right now, what is in game and what is playable and what we are playing? Like you shouldn't be so irate, and and like, frankly, like no nobody should be able to make you so depressed and pissed off and ragey that you can't even think of things to be thankful of because of something that's not even on the live server. I did if think of things. So I said things. And I say step. I said away. I can't think of Enjoy more life. things. Yeah, I did think of things. I had more things. Well, to think of very much. I just <laughs> couldn't think of more things. So in in that in that. Uh, case, I'm going to say I'm thankful that there are more states in the country that no longer regulate marijuana usage. <laughs> I'm thankful for it because that makes games more fun too, right? At least that's what I'm told. <laughs> I'll tell, let me let me throw know. this in on this. On I've this never even smoked a cigarette. I have no comment. So so let me throw this in on this conversation. So one of the things, because I, I, admittedly I looked at all of this Masterwork Gear stuff too, and I, I think we need to devote an episode to this discussion because we can't have it here in the last you know six minutes that we're available. But um, I, I take refuge in the fact that usually Bioware rolls out some really nastiness and then they come back behind it and make it not so nasty in subsequent months. That's what that's what I'm going to so, so hang I'm on to. <laughs> to back out and be contrary and defensive magic. Actually, she does have a significant solid point because they can't. They went live with what CXP was. Period. Yeah, and that was one of the biggest mistakes. And everyone was like, "No, don't do that." And right. that was appalling. The fact that they're willing to do something like this, like even consider, I agree with her. I understand that frustration, uh, that irritation, right? And, and I agree with you. Yeah, they'll probably end up ultimately fixing it. It'll be called an expansion, and there will be a new tier of gear and new levels, and everything will be wiped away. But the fact that this is, like, even supposed to be in anything, particularly considering that, like, the average human being, in order to get themselves geared out, will not do so before the next expansion anyway. So what's the purpose of it? Right. Like, it's really, really stupid. From that standpoint, I, I get that. I really do. But quite frankly, it doesn't ruin my enjoyment of the game. It doesn't. Um, if they're doing their job properly, if the if Matt, since we've had him on the show, and right. he's a friend, you know, he's a friend of the show. I like to say this. Um, if our friend of the show, Matt, say, he probably doesn't Iver, remember us already, who does the that's... operations lead, uh, decides that it is appropriate guessed. to design the difficulty at the current max tier level, as opposed to actually getting that tier level from playing the content, then that's on him, not on me. And I just won't play the content at that stage. Which is another thing, actually. I am really thankful that we have a full operation, a new full operation to play. Absolutely. I was really glad and really pissed that I missed that on Switch. I play it, even if it was story mode. Uh, I love 16-man content. I love playing new bosses. I like grouping up with people. Um, you know, like, I don't like pugs, but I am thankful for friends. No question. Um, and, and honestly, I do think um, there there is reason enough to question, particularly in today's day and age, the the 
positive impact of social media, but I do think that there is a demonstrable positive in fact mm -hmm. impact. And actually, maybe that's that would be a good reason to bring Dr. Swotor back on at some point. And maybe we could even inspire him to do another big uh, across platform um, uh, study on this. But I bet that uh, as opposed to social media, which is anybody can spew whatever they want anywhere to anybody, you've got actually within an MMO gaming environment, while there are certainly plenty of trolls that like to talk in general, right. when you get into guild format, communications amongst members, friends, communities that build and develop, we could even bring on like a Max or a Seema from Sword or Escape podcast to talk about the, the fact that when you get to know one another and actually build connections and it's not just anonymous faces and anonymous voices, I and, and I do feel that you get that within uh, video game mm -hmm. MMO guild environments, I think that's tremendously positive. Um, I think that there is there are things to be tremendously thankful for, that you have the, that kind of friendship and those and community to uh, hang out. You know, it's like you used to be able to go and play baseball with friends, except nowadays, apparently, you know, you're threatening your child's safety by walking out the front door. Right. <laughs> so it's, it, and actually, yeah. yep. I, I guess I could make it personal, actually, which is that uh, for me, I have made tremendous friends through high school and college. And the only way for me to stay in contact with them, because we have scattered across this great country mm -hmm. And frankly, this world, because I made friends with international people as well. Um, the best way for us to literally hang out, maybe not physically, but we are literally hanging out together in a digital environment and working towards a common goal. And that, I think, is the thing that I'm most thankful about this game and any MMO to speak of. Yeah, agreed. I actually really don't have many, many friends in my own personal life, but I have tons of friends if you actually look at all over the world, actually, through this community here that I'm a part of. So that's, I totally, totally agree with you. It's uh, very accurate. Um, all right. I so mean, let's... I found love in the digital world that found me in real life. So that worked out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, let's get into announcements real quick. Make sure that we make, sh make sure that we, that you guys know what all is on the radar. I went trolling through the forums. There is a ton of good stuff out there. Uh, right now on, on things that they're intending on doing and explanations for some things. Um, the release date of 5.10 has not been determined completely exactly yet, but they said sometime around early um, December. So that gives us like a week or two, two weeks maybe. Um, so it's actually coming pretty pretty soon. So hang on. A um, lot of stuff on the forums as well. Um, Alliance alerts, they made some clarifications on. Um, they had mentioned previously that when you... If you go and you start 5.10 content, just make sure everybody knows about it. It's it's going to start you fresh like Kotfi started you fresh. It's like, hey, we're going to close the door on everything that has happened past, and this is a brand new start, essentially, for this character. And we're going to do that with all of the alerts. Now they're just doing it with the arc. And the because if you do the Lights Out arc and storyline, that allows you to romance him. And then I want you to have that later on and then be able to mess with other romances. Wait, 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 wait. Totally. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> the light side choice leads to you having sex with a megalomaniacal, <laughs> mass murdering, genocidal hate. I've monitor. not done it. I'm just taking this at Charles Boyd's word. But apparently, it that's doesn't the path actually to get let there. you sleep with them. You enter a romance, you say, Oh, yes, I love you. You uh, exchange your lovey dovey crap, and then you're like, so Oh, cute cutscene, and then it's done. He was in jail, and he had a lot of women that loved him and sent him. <laughs> I think he even married one of them. <laughs> that doesn't make it a good thing. Just in case anybody's I wondering. I didn't say it was good. I was just, There's you know, like a combo. Just in case no, anyone's I, wondering, I, I, Redna, I, Redna doesn't like Orchid very much. <laughs> well, I mean, reasons. I don't either, like... It's robot forces that just, wipes humans out. Like, yeah, right. it's bad. Just bad. because he converted means he doesn't pay for his crimes? Oh, I'm good. My mother sacrificed life for us. I'm cleansed, blah, blah, blah. I should be absolved and never have to do anything, and I shouldn't pay for it or try to rebuild or help or anything. No. Nah. I'll just stand by your side, Commander. Great, 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 great times 42. Grandson, Kylo Ren, will be forgiven in episode 11. Why can't you forgive me? Kylo Ren? Interesting. <laughs> it's, it's going to happen, you know. He's, he's totally going light side. <laughs> he needs to die to be forgiven. That needs to be the new story that has not been told in Star Wars. Frankly. All right. Realistically. Yeah. So, that's it. Uh, Magic, uh, over to you. 
this has been a very fun episode <laughs> we've been uh, we've been uh, all over the place so we would like to say thank you thank you thank you thank you for everyone who's been lurking chatting actively watching or just sitting in channel and afk because they want to self support us because i know there's at least one of you so thank you we appreciate it and the people who are watching through other sources which we can't actually see we appreciate that as too to all of our haters on reddit you're loved we appreciate you thank you and for this thankful thanksgiving episode we are generally grateful not thanksgiving episode thanksgiving time period episode we are generally just thankful for all over everything that you guys contribute whether it's either just listening to our podcast or finding us on patreon or generally typing us in anywhere we love being pinged and added to things, and we absolutely love that you guys love this show and love this game, and you're interested. We appreciate it. Thank you. You all are wonderful. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And that brings us to the end of the episode. The council is adjourned. If you'd like to reach us, you can email us at the council at the council Like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the council You can find Elise on Twitter at abrown35, Magic Ace at the Magic Ace. Redna at R3DN4, and me. I, I am Sakar. <laughs> that's what the script says. <laughs> also, don't forget our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the council tour, where patrons can catch the articles we're talking about behind the scenes and exclusive backstage access to our after show chat. That's it for this week, guys. I've seen your daily routine. You are not busy. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, master.